Um, my dad's Dr. Peter McGaugh, as you alluded to. And so I grew up infused and seeped really in the importance of silver mining, but also how incredible uh, the deposits that produce silver are. This is uh, David Smith for uh, Stock Pulse, and we're going to have uh, a very interesting interview here today uh, talking about Reina Silver. And we have a lady here who has a connection with the, one of the most famous individuals in the world who discovers carbonate deposit, uh, carbonate replacement deposits. And so we're going to learn about the company in specific and perhaps CRVs in general. So let's go for it. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing real well. How about you? I'm doing great. I mean, I really enjoy getting the chance to be here at the Silver Summit and having an opportunity to come to a place that I've heard in a, in a, in a conference that I've heard so much about from my dad over the years. Um, my dad's Dr. Peter McGaugh, as you alluded to. And so I grew up infused in seeped really in the importance of silver mining, but also how incredible uh, the deposits that produce silver are, especially in the Mexican silver belt where you get these incredible carbonate replacement deposits, the, the maelstrom really of geologic events that went together to create this perfect environment and host for the silver and the other polymetallics that we love so much. And your father, I believe, is on the cusp of, of uh, starting production in what could become the world's largest primary silver producer. And but what this, this is one half of the story, so to speak. So that in itself is very exciting. But what's going on with Reina Silver now, which is the new publicly traded company, is looking for something that's, that's connected with that. And, and rather than me losing it in translation, why don't you tell me how that might look in terms of what they're trying to do? So essentially, you know, Juan Escipio and the MAG project um, be going into production here in the near future. And there were projects that MAG had, that Reina has since acquired, that are in a lot of ways, in any other company would have been the flagship. And Reina has now taken those on, and Gigi, which is one of the big ones, uh, is a new component of unexplored territory in the Santo Olalia district. And Santo Lalia is where my dad did his PhD doctoral thesis. And it's where he developed the model that he used to find Juan Escipio and Valdecanas and Platosa and, and Cinco de Mayo. So we are now in the place where he came up with the model and finally getting to explore and see whether or not he was right about an area that's really important to him, and there's an incredible team of exploration geologists who are working down there right now, and they just completed a 12,000 meter drilling program. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, we'll be, you know, here soon, we'll be releasing the results of that assay and figuring out where we're going from there. Now, it's my understanding that they're actually looking for the possibility of the other half of the CRD that is going to propel um, mag silver into production, very high quality silver and, and in, in terms of grades, and also a fair amount of gold structured throughout that, which is a little bit unusual. So I think you're confusing Reina, or uh, Gigi and Latosa. So Reina's uh, Gigi project. So Santo Lali is a, Reina focuses on high grade uh, district scale deposits. And so the, both Gigi and Plato and Batsapilis are both uh, historic districts. And Santo Olalia, over the course of its history, between the West Camp and the East Camps of Santo Olalia, produced about half a billion ounces of silver, which, which isn't too bad. And essentially, the Gigi project is the middle camp that hasn't been explored before. Batapilis, which is what you were talking about in, and, and excuse me, I'll back up real quick. Uh, and the question on the middle camp, right, is that the, the east camp and the west camp, so the historic mining districts, those were one half of what we know from models of CRDs, how they work. That's one section. We still haven't found the main scarn. 
And so one of the things that we're looking for at Gigi is whether or not we can find that main scar, scar, scar and the other half, as it were, of the CRD spectrum, which would be really exciting. Uh, Botapilis, which you were talking about, uh, that is a historic mining district. And unlike a lot of other projects, which are silver mining districts, Botapilis was a native silver deposit. And that's what they were primarily mining. The old timers would follow these silver veins until they would find these big old ore chutes and mine that out incredibly high grade. Um, and so Reyna, instead of focusing on the old historic district and getting some drill holes in there, decided to instead say, you know what? We're gonna go find the extension of this. We're gonna go find out how big this thing is. And so, we put in a 10,000 meter drilling program uh, to the north of the historic district. And we're actually able to hit the Cabrisa and the Tororo uh, veins. And one of the amazing things that happened was in one of the sections, we actually also found native gold, which is something that hasn't been found before at Batapilas. Typically you get you know, yeah, how crazy is it to say that you'd get these Brillo pads of native silver? Well, now we're also getting gold veining as well. And so what a combination, and it'll be really exciting to see where it goes from there. That is fascinating. Now, I also believe that Reina Silver has acquired some properties outside the area too. Uh, is that correct? Outside of the- Outside of the, the, the general area of Mexico. Yeah, so we also have a project called Medicine Springs in Nevada. Uh, it's kind of over by Elko, it's in the Ruby Mountain Valley. Um, and it is a project that had had a couple of little things going on with it, but what's really attractive about Medicine Springs is that we see a lot of the features that we want to look for when we're doing exploration of carbonate replacement deposits, so the, the things that you keep your eyes out for, we're seeing them show up at Medicine Springs. So we're hoping that it, we're getting it drill ready and we're gonna put some holes that are actually at a depth where we can get some better understanding of what's going on there and see where that goes because it is in the type of host rocks and it's in the geologic setting and it's another interesting application of the CRD model. That's great. Well, now, as, as we kind of wrap things up a little bit here, is there anything else that you'd like to add that you didn't think about or that you'd like to expand on in regard to Reina Silver? I think the big point with Reina Silver is that in a lot of ways, it's using the same philosophy that was the backbone of, Ma that is the backbone of Mag Silver. It's going after high grade deposits and not at small scale, but really going for finding the big I say monsters, but you're, we're looking for the big ones and we're looking for the ones that are high grade and potentially important discoveries. And if you're going to make a mine, it might as well be a big one, right? Yeah, if you put a hole in the ground, might as well get the most as you can for, for the rock, each ton of rock you pull out. Well, thank you so much, Laurie McGaw, and it's uh, been a pleasure speaking with you today. I I'll say as a disclaimer, I'm a shareholder in, in Reina Silver and, and also I have a position in MAG, and, and I have so much respect for your father. I mean, he, it's my understanding that really people didn't have a sense of what CRB, you know, carbon replacement deposits were until he identified this. And I think he wrote his, his thesis paper on that and, and in the ground, not just not an abstract thing, but he actually was out there digging around and, and, and proved these things. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, is like, as a daughter, I can gush a little bit. It is so cool to see someone put in so much time and effort and study and time away from family spending boots on the ground. The geologist who steps on the most rocks wins. Um, and getting to prove those theories and getting to see the results and see the, you know, see the silver as it were, right. it really comes up. And you know, native silver is so beautiful. I've never seen native gold, but is it cross-hashed a lot like native silver, only it's gold or what? It depends on the crystal structure. Some of them are octahedrons, um, but you don't see the same like herringbone that you would in the like a, like a native silver. It's got a little bit of a, a different crystal structure, but 
it has its own special element to it as well. Well, great. Well, hopefully I'll get a chance to see some of it. And uh, thank you so much for Stock Pulse, and uh, we're good.